Thank you. Is it on? Is it on? Can you hear me? We got this? You didn't play my song. You did. Just did. There was another one. Well, God bless you. It's good to see you. Thank you for being here today, listening to me. You could be doing other things. Today, I want to ask the question, who are you? It's your choice. We ask ourselves that when we're growing up, you know, as kids. It's like, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a fireman. I want to be a policeman. I want to be a doctor, whatever. We set dreams. Well, who are you and what do you want to be for God? Are you the same person today you were 10 years ago? No. For some of us, we're different today than we were a week ago, a month ago. That's the beauty of walking with God. You are free to move with him and be who he needs you to be. That's just a beautiful thing. Last week, Garrett did a teaching on awareness is the key that unlocks. Got that thumb snapped out. <laughs> And that is awesome because when you become aware that something's available, then you go, hey, wait a minute, can I do that? And that's what I hope to do for you today. There are three things I want to cover for you today. One, what is God's desire for you? Two, how do we accomplish his desire? And three, how to relinquish our efforts to God? So it's not all on us, okay? Number one, what is God's desire for you? God calls us to transformation. We were dead in trespasses and sins at one time. We were dead and didn't know it. But he brought us back to life. We sang about that. Now that we're alive in Christ, he wants to transform us into his vision, of what he has had since the beginning of the universe. That takes us into desiring to align ourselves with him and his word. If I wanted to be a good carpenter, I would hire on working with another carpenter who was qualified already, maybe a master in his field, and say, teach me. And I would align myself with him and do the things he did. I would imitate him to learn the craft, wouldn't I? We do that in any job you go to. We align ourselves with somebody who knows more and can teach us. Who knows more than God? Nobody. I'm going to invite you into a little part of my world. And I'll apologize ahead of time for that, because <laughs> for some of you, the military isn't your thing. I get that. Uh, it, it's a big part of my life, and I loved it. I've got a couple of videos I want to show you. Go ahead and play the first video, please. Hey, you refer to me as Drill Sergeant. Not Drill Sergeant, sir. Not Sir Drill Sergeant. Not even Sir. Do you understand me? Yes, Drill Sergeant! And that's how the adventure begins. These men... What I want you to notice is not the drill sergeant, but all of the recruits here are from different ethnicities, different height, different weight, different looks, all different kinds of backgrounds coming into a new thing. <clears throat> kind of like our members, people coming into the church here. They're from all different backgrounds. They come in and begin something new, a walk with the Father. So you notice all the differences, all right? Eight short weeks later, play the second one.
Now, that's exactly right. But you see the unison? They all looked alike. They all marched the same. They were now one unit. God's desire when people all over the world get born again, they come into God's family. And typically, that's initially at a local church level where they get integrated into the family. And as every person grows in toward God, they begin to say the same thing. They begin to think the same way because they're in alignment with the Father. That was just short eight weeks. Make people a team. Just think what God can do. God wasn't involved in that one. (laughs) What God can do in your life aligning with him. Absolutely phenomenal. Our transformation with God, for God to get us where he sees us, begins with us saying, have your way, God, let me go. Let's go. Let's do this. I want to know what I can do for you and with you. That's the big thing. It's always with God. You're not alone. It's not like, well, I think I'll try this on my own. Uh, Smack down in the ground. It's not what happens. Look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 in the Passion Bible. And in love he chose us before he laid the foundation of the universe. Because of his great love, he ordained us so that we would be seen as holy in his eyes and unsustained innocence. That's how he sees us. Now, do you see yourself that way when you look in the mirror? (laughs) Some mornings I get it, boy, you really blew it yesterday. Others, it's like, ah, yeah, I did great. Verse 11, through our union with Christ, we too have been claimed by God as his own inheritance. Before we were even born, he gave us our destiny that we would fulfill the plan of God who always accomplishes every purpose and plan in his heart. God never fails. His plan that he sets will always come out. You want to be a part of that plan? Yeah, let's go. I do. I want to be a part of that plan. And you can move as far and as fast with God as you want to. Let's go. Yep. You know, throughout the day in our endeavors to align with God, um, researchers have found that we have over 50,000 thoughts a day. I'd hate to stop count those for the researchers, but they did and over 35,000 decisions a day. 35,000 times you get to say, yes, God. Yes, God. I'll do it your way, God. Not my way. Your way. I thought that was interesting. So, point number two. How do we accomplish his desire to be what he destined us to be? You may not see yourself where God sees you right now. I get that. I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. I'm still figuring that out. God knows, and I'm working my way towards that, whatever that is. And I'm finding in my life, he is opening more and more doors for me to serve, more and more doors for me to do things for him. That's exciting. That's fun. How do we accomplish his desire? 2 Timothy 2.15, we need to know his word. He's given us revelation in the scriptures. We need to know what is the revelation he already gave us is. Sort of a, a platform or a jumping off point. Something that we can use as a guide for our life and understanding and making those decisions every day. In the King James, I've got study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. When you understand the scriptures and can rightly divide them, meaning you put them in the right context, though the word spoken for the moment, they're going to be correct. You will not be ashamed 
using those words. They're God's words. In the Bible alone, God has given humanity all things that are necessary for the proper understanding of who he is, who we are, and how he acted in the past and what he expects from us. It's all in the Bible. So that's a pretty good book to get to know. The Bible contains things that God thought we as humans should know on a number of different topics. His teaching on any subject is sufficient for us. We don't have any need to go anywhere else to find answers. What God said it, that settles it. I choose to believe it. The devil, on the other hand, being the God of this world, the arch enemy to God Almighty, wants to disrupt that. He doesn't want you aligning with God. He doesn't want you seeing what your destiny with the Father is. That's not in his best interest. So you got to keep him out of the equation. So when you get thoughts that are contrary to what you've read in the scriptures, which is why the Bible is so important, you can go, hey, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. I think I'll go get a second opinion. God, what do you say? Oh, all right, I'm going to stick with the second opinion. Throw that first opinion away. We do it in the medical field, don't we? You go get some bad news from a doctor, and you go, I'm going to see if he's right. I'm going to go get a second opinion. <laughs> and you go to another doctor, and you hope he doesn't tell you the same thing because you didn't like the news the first time. You can do that with God. The devil throws a negative thought in your head that you should do something or be something that you're not. Hey, wait a minute. I'm going for a second opinion. And after you get the second opinion, do you ever go back to the first doctor? No. <laughs> so why go back to the devil? We don't need to. Leave him. <laughs> we need to put forth effort every day to find out what God has in store for us. Every day is a new alive and exciting time to walk with God. He's got something new for you every day. Yeah. Now, I look out and I see some new faces. Welcome. Glad you're here. I see some familiar faces, but I haven't had the privilege of sitting down and really talking with you and getting to know your heart and what you want with God and all that. But I'm here to tell you, your life can change dramatically in the amount of time you want it to. Yeah. You want it to. If you don't want it, He's not going to force it on you. Not, not going to do that. But God has a vision in mind for us. Mm -hmm. All he's trying to do is get us to come along. Yeah. He gave us hope that we could fulfill our destiny that he has set for us. Our true identity, who we are, is in him. Nowhere else. You won't find it in your secular job. You won't find it in your marriage, your relationship. You won't find it anywhere else. Your true identity can only be found in him. That's it. The hope that he's given us, a definition of hope, is the confident expectation that good is coming. You can start every day with that. Today's going to be a good day. I want you to take out something to write on, if you could, note, or, or just your phone to put a notepad, or maybe, Glenn, you got a good memory. That's okay. <laughs> you do. do. You're going to remember it. And this is personal. I want This is just for you. I don't want you to show it to anybody. I'm not going to ask for anybody to read it. No, this is just for you. We lived in a uh, world run by the devil for so many years. And we thought that was our identity until we got born again. And now we're exposed to the truth. But we still have some of that old stuff in our heads. So I want you to write down three negatives that you think about yourself. Three negatives that you know the Bible doesn't say about you. Any three. It could be, I'm, a, I'm afraid of heights. I'm afraid to speak in front of people. I'm too fat, too short, too tall, too bald. I fit all of those. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> that's my negative. Exactly. You got it going. But those three simple 
things that are in your life that you've believed. Hey, uh, there's a lot of things that you've believed that people told you through the years and you just accepted. And when you're done, look up so I know you're done. You folks at home, do the same exercise, please. Take out something and follow along. Uh huh. <laughs> They're funny. And when you see the truth of God's word, they are really funny. Yeah, this is what's good, because God is just so awesome. Man. All right, good. Now, what I want you to do, go back to that same list, and under the first negative or to the right of it, I want you to write the exact opposite of it. If it's, I'm afraid of heights, I would write, I absolutely have no fear of heights. God has delivered me. So take that negative and turn it to a positive in your life. And then never, ever think those three negatives again because they're lies about you. They're lies that you do not need to hold on to. God bless you. And again, when you're done, look up so I know you're done. Hi, Yvonne. Good, good. All right, Romans 4, verse 17 is the next scripture. That's what the scripture means when it says, I have made you the father of many nations. He is our example and father, for in God's presence, he believed that God can raise the dead and call into being things that don't even exist yet. You might think, that that positive you wrote isn't in existence yet. But you can believe it is. Declare that over your life, and you will believe that what was not there today will be there tomorrow. Okay? Bring it into existence into your life. Okay? We have to see ourselves the way God sees us, not the way the devil portrays us. One of the laws of the Spirit is if something happens, something was spoken. We don't have something just by saying something, but saying something's necessary to have something. Let me give you an example. In the beginning in Genesis, God said, let there be light. And then what? There was light. See? <laughs> Jesus declared at the start of his ministry, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. And then he began his ministry. He didn't begin his ministry till he said it. You have to say it for it to happen. But what you say isn't just anything. It's in alignment with God and the Scriptures. That's why we do the declarations, to get you to align yourself. I put, I had Danny, great help copied 40 of these declarations and put them on the table back there, and I noticed most of them were gone already. Thank you. Take these, two, there's four full pages of declarations. Read one a day, five a day, ten a day, whatever you want, but read them every day. Get to see what God says about you. You know, when you get a letter from a relative you haven't seen in a long time, and you open it up, and you're excited to hear what's going on, and all they're talking about is how great you are and how much they miss you and what you did for their life and how they can't wait to see you again. That thrills your heart, doesn't it? That kind of letter. That's, that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> see, the younger generation doesn't get the postal service. There's a letter. Let me explain what a letter is in case some of you young folk don't know. You would take a blank piece of paper and you would take a pen and write. I know, it, and you could even do it in cursive. That's an ancient language. 
<laughs> oh my goodness, you just threw me off. That was good. Okay, when you get a text message, that doesn't fit for all of us old folks. I hate texting. I don't like it at all. But it's the way of people today. That's good. I like that. But words that you read affect you. Words are powerful. Garrett mentioned this verse, Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. You know, every time you say a word, you hear it. You may be saying it to somebody else. I may be talking to Drew about golf. Good game. We love it. Every word I say to him about that, I hear. So if I say something negative to Drew, I hear it too. It has an impact on me. Okay? I have to control that. I have to think about those words. I don't want those words to affect me also. And I don't want to say anything negative to somebody to affect their lives. Certainly don't want to do that. But there's things that we say that have powerful impact. If I can tell you that what you've done for me in my life has been an awesome thing and tell you specifically events and things, that would thrill your heart to hear that, that you had that impact on me. But if I said something like, well, you said this negative about me and I just don't care for you anymore, it would be crushing. It would be like, well, that's not cool. So we want to be encouraging. We want to say the things that God would have us to say that align, again, align with him. Here's a verse that you can declare over yourself. Luke 10, 19 and 20. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Now you can play golf in the desert. <laughs> They're everywhere. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you, Notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. But think about that. I have power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Say that with me. I have power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Isn't that something? And over all the power of the enemy. Say that one and over all the power of the enemy. That's the devil. You have all the power over him. Take that. He's, been, he's given it to you. Ephesians 4, 24. And that you put on the new man. You'll be a new man as you change and align your thinking to what God has for you. Your friends and family won't even know you anymore. They'll be like, what'd you do? What pill did you take? Oh, you became a Jesus man. You go, yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I like that. Yep. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. That's a pretty good life. Pretty good. Wherefore, put away lying. Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. The putting away of lying is not just the words you tell others, but it's the words you tell yourself. You're lying to yourself if you confess anything other than what's in the Scriptures. Anything other than what God says about you, you're lying to yourself. And what we've started doing around here is that when there's a lie, you just kind of laugh at it. <laughs> That's a lie. Give me a break. That can't be true. That's a lie. That's the funniest thing I heard all day. Yeah. Philippians 1. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. From the day you got born again until the return of Christ. And we don't know when that is. Could be today. That'd be all right. I'll take it. But we don't know. But he's going to perform that work in you from the day you were born again until his return. You're going to partner along and let him work? That's your choice. You can be whoever God needs you to be. It's your choice. 
2 Timothy 1, 9. Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. You know, when a couple get together, they're married, and they decide they want to have a child, they really start dreaming about that child. Is it going to be a boy, a girl? What are they going to grow up to be? How are we going to be able to, to affect that? And then as the child is born and growing, growing up, I know Jess and Glenn, four kids running around the house, they pay particular attention to each one of them. They have an idea now based on what they've seen in the growth of the children. Yeah, this one could be that. That one could be, like I think you told me once, Jack's going to be an engineer. Yeah, yeah, yeah see? Yeah, he's going to be an engineer. I already have an idea a destiny in mind for them. And they will help them achieve whatever it is they choose to do. God has the same vision for you. He wants you to be what he sees you can be. And you might not even know what that is. So the way to find out is start stepping out, doing things. Hey, do you see yourself as a teacher? You might not. But how do you know until you go and try it? So ask to teach somebody. How do you know if you're good in the AV team or not? Can you work that technical stuff? Maybe never ever touched it. How do you know? You don't know and go say, hey, can I try? I want to see if this is a long suit for me. Can I get my hands in there? You could. <laughs> Steve says, yes. <laughs> You have to step out into that and then touch it. Daniel does the cameras along with a couple other volunteers. He has tremendous skill at this. You might want to say, hey, do I have any skill at this? Daniel can say, well, come on, come alongside me, align with me, let me show you, and then we'll see if it fits for you. But if you sit there in the chair and never do anything, how are you ever going to know what God's calling you to do? Maybe you're an evangelist, one who speaks about God to people and invites them to church. You may have a long suit in that where you can talk to anybody, anywhere, at any time, and it's just so comfortable for you. Try it. Find out. Okay? You got to try it and find out. You need to get out of your comfort zone. Oh, I, I like it here. It's comfy. You know, like in the morning, on a cold morning, you're warm in bed and don't want to get out. <laughs> we all can relate to that. Winter is now ending. I brought the warm weather back from Florida with me, and now it's... Uh, thank you. You're welcome. So <laughs> you want to stay in that comfortable position, but you know you got to get out of that to get anything done that day. Get out of your comfort zone. It, you'll find out it's more comfortable somewhere else. Trust me. Okay. God really loves it when we put ourselves in a position where we need him. We recognize, I can't do this alone. Because if I could do it, then I don't need God. Do I ever want to be in a position where I don't need God? I don't want to put myself in that position. I always want to be where I am more vulnerable and I need him to get me through something. Okay? 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10 in the Passion Bible. But he answered me. This is Paul talking. God said, My grace is always more than enough for you, and my power finds its full expression through your weakness. So I will celebrate my weaknesses, for when I am weak... I sense more deeply the mighty power of Christ living in me. So I'm not defeated by my weakness, but delighted. For when I feel my weakness and endure mistreatment, when I'm surrounded with troubles on every side and face persecution because of my love for Christ, I am made yet stronger. For my weakness becomes a portal to God's power. That's, phew. now, 
There are times when it seems like the whole world is just crashing in on you. Anybody ever been in that position? I felt it many times in my life where I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. I have a short video for you. And what I want you to pay attention to is the guy at the center of all the drill sergeants yelling at him. Look at his facial expression. Okay? Don't be distracted by the noise, but just look at his face. Okay? Go ahead. Dog up here! Where's it at? Hey, what did you call? What did you freaking call? What? Are you smelling it? Take them through. Pick the gear up right now. Get it. Pick it up and comply with the directions that you were given. What is your problem, Danger? Why are you still smiling at me, Danger? So freaking smiling. Why is that grin off your freaking face? You understand? Why are you having a problem? Listen to the directions that I'm. <laughs> He's standing there, and I, I was a drill sergeant. He made the biggest mistake he could have made. He singled himself out. Now I got you. Now I know you. <laughs> he stood there with a smile on his face. He's like, ain't none of this bothering me. Look at me. <laughs> and when you partner with God, knowing that God saw today, he knows what you're going through today. He knows where you're going to be tomorrow, and he can tell you what to do to get out of that situation where everything seems to be just coming in on you. And there are times when you just get a little overwhelmed because you're looking at the, the problems instead of the solution. Always got to look to God, and you can just sit there and smile. Yeah, the bills are piling up. Things aren't good at work. Whatever's going on, doesn't matter. You can smile. And you go, okay, I'm going to get through this. It'll be okay. He knew he wasn't going to get touched. He knew he wasn't going to get hurt. He's just smiling. I might have to do some push-ups. Okay, I need those. <laughs> oh, man. Just smile. Don't even let it affect you. Hebrews 11. <clears throat> We have to attach faith to what we do with God. I mean, I'm going to trust and I'm going to believe what God says. Hebrews 11:6. but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Do you believe that God exists? I mean, that's a starting point. And if you do, do you believe that he's a rewarder of you if you seek him? Hey, I'm coming after you, man. I'm going to search you out, God. I want to know. 2 Corinthians 3, 5 in the Passion. Yet we don't see ourselves as capable enough to do anything in our own strength, for our true competence flows from God's empowering presence. What I can do in my life today is because of what God is working through me. It's not because of my own ability. There is none there. 2 Corinthians 10.5 in the Passion. We can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture... Like prisoners of war, every thought and insist that it bow in obedience to the anointed one. You have the power to control your thinking. You have the power from here to here, that short distance, to decide what you're going to believe about yourself, what you're going to believe about somebody else, and what you're going to believe about God. It's your choice. Romans 12, 2 in the Passion. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in His eyes. You can do that. You can help somebody else do that. You can help many people 
do that. It's your choice. There's a picture of an expression <laughs> that you, go, you can look at that and go, okay, this is, what just happened kind of look. This is our dog, Noah, who uh, I think he just got a haircut. And <laughs> he was looking at Carolyn like, what did you do to me? Well, you can live life with that expression, like, what the heck just happened? Okay? Or you can celebrate life. <laughs> you can be free to celebrate what's happened in your life. Okay? You can just celebrate life and go, yes, God is there. So, three things I talked about today. What is God's desire for us? He has a destiny in mind for each and every one of us. Our destiny is unique. And that is to become what he saw us to be. Number two, how do we accomplish that desire? We change our minds to what he thinks and align ourselves to him. And three, how do we relinquish our efforts to God? We have faith that God will complete the work that he started as we align ourselves with him. We're never alone. Okay? God bless you. I'll pray. God, thank you so much for your wonderful love. Thank you for being so good and for calling us to a destiny that only you could see. But we will be able to realize it. Thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.